A soldier bearing the crest of Xanon heralds you as you enter the town of Vernus. After a round of careful questioning, the Xanon soldier that had regarded you with suspicion informs you that the Crown Prince of Xanon is in the town on campaign. You notice that a crowd is gathered in the village square listening intently to the albino prince that leans weakly against his attendant. And so I am overcome with grief. Xanon has lost the war with the New Kingdoms, and without its leader, shall become host to the conflict between the two great nations for many years to come. Even if the late Prince Klein were still alive and was to make a bid for peace, the war between these nations would not be silenced. War. Can not these nations who wish to stain themselves with blood and flame recognize that an unimaginable crisis has befallen Sierra Terra? These evil winds spoil our forests, take the lives of our countrymen, and rob us of our lands. The Elia and their heretical forest plan to revive the Meshera, the nightmares that destroyed the civilization of Remido. Now is the time for unity. A great trial has been thrust upon Erva, and if we put aside our petty squabbles and learn to understand one another, we can destroy the heretics and their forest. Together we can overcome this catastrophe. Xanon is no longer the superpower that it once was, but hear me, my friends. We are not powerless. Palmyra, which has heretofore withstood the power of these two great nations, and has the faith and determination of its people, is the hope of Sierra Terra. A great cheer rose from the square. The speaker's voice was drowned out by the sound, no longer reaching your ears where you stood at the back of the crowd. You leave the square slowly, remembering the albino prince, with a strange sense of both unease and interest. At the bar in Vernus, the ringing cups of the Xanon soldiers, the bar in Vernus had at long last regained its liveliness. A young soldier, overwhelmed with liquor and drunk with his own sense of power, fabricated some pretext to begin a fight with a seedy-looking person, occasionally yelling and striking the man with his fists. A red-haired official, noting the commotion that his subordinate was causing, drained his tankard of crim ale and stood up calmly. What's going on here? Oh, Captain, nothing serious, just questioning this suspicious looking man here. The prince in the area, a guard can't just overlook suspicious people even while in the bar. Hey, you, you listening? This man is. Yeah, as you can see, he's not much for manners, and I'll just rough him up a bit more and send him away. I couldn't possibly enjoy my drink now if I don't cause him at least some pain. Stop. Come on, Captain. If I break one of his legs, it'll just give the beggar an easier time. Whose benefit do you think I said that for? This man is the White Hawk of Xanon. Leave us alone for a while. So, this is where you hold up, is it? What, did you intend to become some type of hermit? You've changed. The White Hawk of Xanon, given the privileges of an aristocrat whose talent was envied and whose deeds were praised by all, now sits in the corner of a rundown bar, gazing at the world with the eyes of a dead man. It was troubling, you know to no longer have anyone to compete with once she left Xanon. <laughs> Not even a single response to all of that. When you're bored of this little act, do you ever think back to what you told me back then? You've been stripped of your fame and wealth, and you look like nothing more than a common beggar. What an unimaginable joke you are now, compared to what you once were. Did you decide, perhaps, to cast off your desires and live the life of a sinner as a memorial to that girl? I don't want to hear it. That alien lass. A leash, was it? If you will allow me to borrow your own words here, wasn't even she just a part of your mask? 
have no intention of playing 20 questions with you. I'd rather be beaten and thrown into prison than answer your questions. As you request then, Bethel Rumford. Seems you've become soft. Any danger you may have posed has long since left you. Meanwhile, at the camp of the Prince of Zanan, Lord Simor, we have arrested a strange man in the city tavern. According to Sir Loiter, he is the White Hawk that disappeared three years ago. Are you certain? Ah, well, there's a passing resemblance, but his appearance is drastically different and he has refused to answer any of our questions. I'd say that's a different person myself, but if Sir Loiter says it's him, then I trust his judgment. Changed, has he? <laughs> of course he has. It's impossible he'd be the same as he was before. Let him be. Do not harm him. As you wish, Lord Seymour. How ironic. We searched for you ever since the time you left Sanon, and yet only now that things have progressed so far do we finally find you. The White Hawk of Zanon. What could you possibly expect from him at this point? I expect nothing but that he shall live and bear witness to the comedy that shall soon unfold. Without that man, my story cannot come to a close. Meanwhile, in the throne room of Palmia. It's wonderful to see you again, Larnera. You have grown from a naughty little child into a splendid woman since we last met. I'm sure your journey here must have been harsh given the circumstances. It's been a long time, Your Majesty. Thanks to your influence, we were able to arrive here without incident. This time, as a messenger from the forest, and for the sake of both the Elia and all of Sierra Terra, I would like to request that Palmia lend the Elia its strength in dealing with the heretical forest. La Nera, I am truly sorry, but I'm afraid that I cannot lend you the aid that you seek. I too am pained by the tragedy befalling the Elia, but as I'm sure you're aware, the most Palmia can do is seek to keep a balance between the Yells and the Ulderna. The Prince of Zanon has already gathered significant support from various nations and their peoples. They have found a common enemy in the heretical forest. If Palmia were to speak against this now, not only would Zanon treat us as rebels, but the two great nations would as well. If Palmia were to fall, there would no longer be any barrier against a war between the two great nations. I simply cannot condemn Sierra Terra to another great war. Is your intent then for the Elia to be the sacrificial lambs on the altar of peace between the two great nations? The country was established because of the blood of innocent Elia was being shed in foreign nations. What peace we have had has been short and fragile. Is there no longer anyone on this continent with the heart to reach out to the weak? they committed a sin, then their fate is truly regrettable. Yet you're surely aware of what your heretical forest and its ether winds have wrought upon the world? So you've come, Lord Barrius? Certainly, it is undeniable that strange events have been occurring in the forest due to the ether winds. But for what reason would the Vindale Forest, which has posed no problems for all of Sierra Terra, suddenly act up now? Is it not prejudiced to lay blame at the feet of the Elia without first investigating? Your Majesty, please hear my words. This issue of Aetherwinds and the forest is not related to the calamity that they speak of. If the claims that the Prince of Xanon makes are wrong, speak no further, Marnie. Your Majesty, the truth... I said that's enough. I'll hear the rest of what you have to say tomorrow. I'll have arrangements made for you and your companion to stay tonight at the inn. Now is... not the time for us to continue. Please understand. Your Majesty... Very well. But I will be back again tomorrow. 
You are the Elias' final hope. How embarrassing. Don't believe the girl's lies, King Zabby. I began investigating this disaster at a young age. The Meshera are also known as the World Devouring Giants. Is the heretical forest whose roots spread and eat away at our lands not exactly that? Even when her claims that the forest and the Meshera are unrelated to be true, it is unreliable that the for undeniable that the forest is consuming our land and producing terrible monsters. King Zavi, I must insist that you entrust the girl to my care. Hmm, could that be because what Lanair speaks is the truth? What I have told you is the truth. I have my own interest in that girl. More importantly, King Zabi, have you forgotten that Palmyra's existence is reliant upon Xanon? Lanair is an important guest. Even if the request is coming from the Prince of Xanon himself, I cannot hand her over. Palmyra will forsake all involvement with the issue of the Vindale Forest. Is that not enough to satisfy you? You must excuse me for now. I have other business that must be attended to. <laughs> she escaped. Still surprised. Is she not the spitting image of her? First the White Hawk, and now her. At last the wheels of destiny have begun to turn. While I don't believe in fate, this lively stage that has been set has exceeded my expectations. I welcome it. We must prepare a suitable role for them. Have faith in your abilities, Barrius the Blue-Haired. <laughs> <laughs>